We're in the evening now and we are racing to get up a small hill in time for sunset. We actually came down a, a mountain today. Um, you would have seen that in the previous video, although I didn't record any of that descent. Uh, and we got down around uh, lunchtime, had a, had a pretty long lunch and a bit of a, a rest and then decided it was worth having a crack at uh, getting somewhere for sunset, which is what we're trying to do now. I think we've just got enough time to get up this hill in the distance. Um, it's not a, not a big hill and we've got about four kilometers to do, something like that. So it should be possible. And you might notice we have a bit of wind now, which is uh, such a relief because we have had an absolute nightmare with midges out here. It has been utterly miserable. The worst midges I've ever had in the Highlands and I have been here in the summer many times before. So that's saying something and I'm just so relieved that we're not gonna have that problem tonight. In fact, we might have to find a slightly sheltered spot for the tents uh, because just need to make sure we actually sleep. Um, so we're actually camping uh, part way to a hill that's a little bit more distant than the ones I would usually go and, and camp on, um, just so that we can do that as a day hike tomorrow. Um, so it's a peak I've not been up before, um, but I'm sure that it has spectacular views. So I'm quite excited to get up there. But first of all, we've got to get up our hill. <laughs> tents are up and we're using this cliff just here as a windbreak. The wind is roughly coming from this direction and it's going to be strong overnight into the early hours of the morning, always coming from this southeasterly direction. And so I was looking for somewhere to pitch the tents that would give us shelter. We're not quite at the top of the hill, but we're close enough um, that we can easily dash up there now. So it's really important to uh, keep safety in mind when you're camping high um, and particularly uh, keep an eye on the winds because even really good mountain tents can get into difficulty if the wind's stronger than forecast for example. Um, so that's what we've done here. Uh, two of the tents here and then, and then Keith's is, is just over there. Um, and now we're going to go up and, and see if we can find something to photograph. The cloud is starting to close in, some of the peaks are starting to disappear. Um, but I'm still hopeful we might get some really good late light and I'd love to find some nice glacial erratics. I don't know if you can see behind me, but there's a few dotted on the hill over there. So that's the kind of thing I'll be looking for. a little bit windy up here but uh, there's so much potential I mean look at that view out over the islands in the lock there that's uh, Loch Marie and Ben Harry Charles. So apologies for the audio issues there it was very windy up on the hill so I'll have to use a lav mic in future but uh, on this day and the following day uh, I did have some audio problems so I'll be doing some voiceover which will give me a chance to talk through composition a bit starting with this one so I had this preconceived idea that I would shoot these uh, glacial erratics as they're called. So they're boulders carried by glaciers and deposited onto a different rock type. So in this case, 
Torridonian sandstone on Lewis in Gneiss. But unfortunately, that doesn't get away from the fact that the subject itself needs to be interesting and this boulder just looks like a rock. And I'm not sure that my composition is particularly interesting either, and nor were my attempts to improve upon it. Um, I mean, the rock's out of focus here because I was just shooting handheld and, and playing around with composition. But clearly, neither shot was going to work for me, uh, and so I quickly moved on. Um, and I came across another rock, technically not an erratic, this one, because it's the same rock type. Um, but uh, this one interested me a bit more because of this diagonal shadow that was coming from the rock. So I was hoping that that would bring a bit of dynamism to the foreground. And I liked the way the hills had a sense of depth from the atmospheric haze looking into the light there. So this certainly seemed to have more potential to me and I think I probably do prefer it. Um, and I shot four versions in total to try and find uh, a, a strong composition. But quite honestly, uh, I, I still didn't um, find anything that really spoke to me. And uh, I shot those four images uh, in one minute and 50 seconds. So a fairly quick, quick work just to explore the potential and then just decided it was never going to work um, again. And so then I moved on and went up the hill um, and the view from the top of the hill was fantastic. You've got these mountains which are much stronger focal points and the clouds were really nice too, but I just could not find that foreground on top of the hill and I did uh, wander around for some time, conscious of the fact that the light was uh, improving, that I probably should have started sooner. But I did um, find this area looking back to those hills again, uh, which had a lot of broken rock and heather and grasses and it was this area that I decided to focus on. So I started out at a distance and then moved in and uh, looked for um, a, a really interesting subject, eventually finding these broken rocks with the light shining through. And then I spent some time exploring the compositions, both visually just with my eyes, but also with my camera. Um, I did have a problem with this rock on the left, which looked just a bit too flat and I wanted to get close and wide like you can see in this shot, but that made the rock particularly large and uh, problematic compositionally. So eventually I decided that I was best off stepping off to the right and panning the camera around, which would then include the sun in the frame, which wasn't ideal in this case, I probably would have preferred to leave it out, uh, but it was necessary to, to solve that problem with the rock on the left. And I'm actually really pleased with this composition. I do think it's quite effective and the light was absolutely stunning. So um, actually quite a, a pleasing result from that uh, fairly quick work on top of the hill as the sun came down. But once I had that shot, um, I checked it over, made sure everything was good, and then I ran back up the hill um, to see if there was something else I could shoot, and uh, the light became spectacular. Um, so I decided that uh, it might be time to gamble. Um, so in this view here, you can see the uh, rocks down um, in, below me. They're what I thought might be a subject to shoot back up at the hills. And I decided because I already had one shot in the, in the bag, why not just run down there and see what I could achieve. So uh, here's some video that I actually shot after the light was good, um, showing you what I had to work with. And uh, quite honestly, um, these groupings of rocks, uh, none of them were, were quite perfect because they were just too bunched together. I think if they were separate, then maybe I could have worked with them a bit more. The, uh, the second grouping here uh, had an interesting rock plateau surrounded by grass in front of it, but again, I, I couldn't really see the composition there working that brilliantly, particularly when the light was on it. And so I ended up just shooting the, the second grouping of rocks on its own, uh, but I think my composition is uh, a little bit lackluster. I mean, obviously the lighting is spectacular, so it's, uh, it's still quite beautiful to look at, but the balance just isn't there because that rock on the left is incredibly dominant, uh, particularly paired with the sunlit mountain, which is also on the left side of the image. And I'm not sure that a square crop or, or four by five vertical crop works particularly well either. So maybe a shot for Instagram here, but uh, not quite one for the, the portfolio, but really nice to um, just have a, have a bit of fun, to be honest, dash around and, and see what I could achieve. So that was uh, sunset. And then we headed back to the tents and took the obligatory uh, lit up 10 shots uh, before heading in for the night to see what the following day would bring.